Right. Welcome everyone to the At The Table Pitch Competition. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Kelly Forkenbrock. I am a public services librarian at North Liberty Library uh, here in North Liberty, Iowa. Uh, I have been so fortunate to work with uh, Steve Kramer and Angel Truesdale on planning this event, um, along with Duncan Smith. And uh, we're just very, very excited to get started here. Um, I do want to send a special thank you uh, to Duncan and EBSCO uh, for all of their help in uh, creating and helping us facilitate uh, this platform and for this event. Um, just a rundown of what the schedule will look like. Uh, we're going to begin with the pitch presentations here. Uh, we're running a little bit behind, but we're going to start with the pitch presentations. And uh, we have five pitches from five extraordinary libraries. And each library will have a, a total of five minutes to make their pitch. Uh, and that also includes a one minute transition to the next team. Uh, once we're through that process, we will have a breakout room for our judges. Uh, as well as uh, for our judges to uh, to deliberate over the five pitches. And while they are in deliberation, we're going to hear from uh, Electra and Hannah. They are two of our 2020 winners from the last pitch competition back in 2020. Um, Shortly thereafter, at the top of the next hour at 4 p.m., uh, we will announce the winners as well as the uh, announcement of the audience award. And if you'd like to stick around once that's done at 4.30, we will be doing uh, kind of a networking discussion wrap up where you can get a chance to meet and greet one another. Um, as well as uh, just ask, I have some uh, networking questions in mind that we can use to uh, kind of facilitate some conversations. So before we move into the five pitches, uh, I wanted to ask if uh, either Steve or Angel has anything to share. Kelly, sure, thank you. Everyone, hello, this is Steve Kramer. Just very quickly, let me uh, extend a thank you to other members of the planning committee. You already heard from Kelly, and many of you have heard from Angel, who's from UNC Charlotte, but also Duncan Smith from EBSCO, Jen Henso, who is our pitch consultant, Jen Wilhelm from Texas A&M, Orlando Duffus, University of Houston, Electra Greer from Nederland Community Library, and one of the winners from two years ago, and also Hannah Taylor, also a past winner of Mid-Continental Public, La Monica, University of Pittsburgh, sorry, La Monica Wiggins, I need to slow down, Tierra Norwood, Swan Business Center, uh, Nash Community College, Tim Tully from San Diego State University, and Teresa Pfeiffer from Corning Optical Communications. So thank you to everyone uh, who helped make this happen, particularly though to Kelly and Angel for being excellent co-chairs. All right, over back to you, Kelly. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I am just filing through some things. I don't wanna keep us too, Let's make sure I'm getting. Um, sorry, I'm just filing through some notes. I'm looking. Um, Steve, are you able to send? I think I thought I saw. Let me. I'm trying to get to the Google Drive with. Could you send me the the Google Drive one more time? Because I think I'm looking in an older Google Drive. Yes. Thank you. I'll send it via private Zoom messaging. Thank you. Let me find you. There you are. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Um, I, I apologize for the wait. I'm just getting my bearings and see, I'm looking for a specific document. Um,
Okay, thank you. All right, I was looking for a very specific list and that is the list of the folks who are competing today. So the first uh, pictures that we're going to hear from are going to be uh, Kay Jelenewski and Kate Hammond. They are from Middletown Township Public Library in New Jersey. And the title of their pitch is Makers Make Business, Supporting Our Community Crafter Entrepreneurs. Right, so Kate and Katie, you can take it away. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let's get our screen shared here. Oh. Can we share our screen? Uh, let me allow you to share screen. Let's see. You should be able to now, apologies. Oh okay. yeah, here we go. Okay. All righty, can everyone see our screen okay? Yes. Okay, okay. perfect. <laughs> okay, great. Hi, everyone. We're so honored to be here. Thank you. I'm Katie Jelineski, reference librarian. And I'm Kate Hammond. I'm the reference manager. Um, as Kelly said, we're from the Middletown Township Public Library in Monmouth County, New Jersey. We are a standalone library. Our, our town has about 65,000 residents, but we do see quite a bit of traffic from surrounding towns also utilizing our space. So today we want to talk to you about our library and our plan to recreate space in order to reflect our mission to enrich, empower, and educate. Currently, uh, we think we're doing a pretty good job as a community hub. Um, the pandemic hit everyone really hard in March of 2020, but by July of that year, we were back open and we never fully closed again. Um, we're extremely lucky. Our building is fairly large. We had a lot of really great support from the staff and the township. Um, and in 2021, we even came up with a contactless pickup and storage system, which I'll touch upon more later. We really pride ourselves on our customer service and are constantly trying to think of new ways to create more dynamic services. Our goal is to move beyond that perception that the library is just a place to house books. We have a lot of really great programs, resources, tools for the entire community, but we really wanna do more to reach that Generation Z part of the, of the community. Our motivation for this project was inspired by our members who have veered away from being nine to fivers and are now taking a shot at being at home entrepreneurs, a change catalyzed for many by the pandemic. Okay, so here are some statistics on our local creative economy. Studies reveal that at least six in 10 Americans have invested in a new hobby since the beginning of the pandemic in March, 2020. Here in Middletown and our surrounding towns, there are over 500 females that have a lifestyle interest in hobbies, crafts, and sewing. 30% of Generation Z, which is ages 23 and under, have taken up new crafts since the pandemic. That is more than any other generation. According to the 2020 U.S. Census, there was a 24% increase in small businesses over the prior year in the U.S. And around the world, there is an estimated 300 million home-based workers. 87% of sellers of homemade goods on Etsy are women. Advertising costs on Facebook has increased by 47% this year. So what does this all mean? More and more people are seeing the benefit of starting a home-based business. The majority of home-based crafting businesses are run by young women. These young entrepreneurs are selling their products online on sites like Etsy, Facebook Marketplace, and Amazon. But recently, advertising costs have increased and supply chain issues are still affecting those small business owners. So how can we as a community partner help? MTPL can provide access to those big ticket items, the sewing machines, the cricket, the cutting machines like a cricket. This way, the small business owner can focus their funds on materials and advertising instead of investing in those larger, more expensive items that will cut into their profit. These will be supplemented by smaller crafting tools and will also house crafter kits that members can check out and use at home. Any award uh, from today will, be, will go towards purchasing these items. Our allocated shareable workspace will allow for networking opportunities. We will provide a monthly lecture series from experts on how to launch and maintain a successful business. 
Our mutual mentoring program will connect Makerspace members from different generations, allowing young adults the opportunity to learn about launching a home-based creative entrepreneurship while they share their own expertise on topics such as social media influence. In conjunction with our very supportive friends of the library, we will organize craft fairs and an annual Maker's Day event for our members to showcase their products. Here we're gonna brag a little bit because we are super excited about this project. Uh, in the early part of 2021, we began working on a plan to purchase a set of lockers for the library. They went public in January and been a big hit. Um, our patrons can pick up their materials 24 seven. We will be allocating certain larger lockers for those using the crafting space to store their materials. So in order to get the word out, we will be advertising via our social media channels and other partner organizations. We firmly believe in the power of the share and find that sharing with different social media channels reaches more people than with one, the ones who just follow the library's accounts. And how will we assess the impact of our makerspace? Quantitatively, we will keep statistics of members' use of space and circulated crafter kits. Qualitatively, we will ask crafters to complete a survey and we'll verbally check on their needs and experiences asking for testimonials. With your support, we strongly feel that we can make a difference and enrich, empower, and educate our young female entrepreneurs in the creative economy. All right. And Thank you very much. Time. Thank you. Thank you. You are right on time. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Lots of practice. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Thank you both for that great uh, pitch there. So uh, we'll give just a minute here for uh, our judges to uh, complete their rubric. Uh, while we introduce uh, the next team. Let's see. Here we go. So the next team is, uh, and again, if I am butchering your name, please correct me. Uh, Mary Guillory Gil uh, with- Guillory. Guillory. Uh, Mary Guillory, she is with Xavier University of Louisiana Library. And their uh, presentation's title is Makers Dive In. It's all yours, Mary. All right, let me get my screen shared. Okay. Hi, my name is Mary Guillory, and I am a librarian for Xavier University of Louisiana. Oh, it didn't change. There we go. All right. We are a historically Black Catholic university located in New Orleans with a student body of about 3,600 that is three quarters Black women. Though we are very well known for our health care programs, business related majors are also some of our most popular. Xavier is home to the Louisiana Small Business Development Center for the region and also offers a robust student entrepreneurship program within the Business Department's Entrepreneurship Institute. Together, these organizations provide many amazing services to the community at large. For example, our students are able to take part in LSBDC internships, receive investor relations training, and earn monthly stipends for qualifying business activity from the Entrepreneurship Institute. We want to get more students into these into those programs by exposing them to the innovation process and removing the initial financial risk of bringing a product to market. We already require that our student workers complete a six week lean business training program and apply what they have learned to improve library services. Many students come into the innovation studio to work on class assignments, make items with pure artistic value or reproduce borrowed designs. But we want to help them expand their thinking into creating with the business purpose in mind. We'll work with them toward an innovation goal regardless of their skill level. These are the key areas of focus for the library's innovation studio. This coming fall, we plan to add a virtual reality lab as well as take part in the Maker USA cost share program to bring in a full-time staff member with a dedicated focus on increasing library economic development, innovation, and entrepreneurship activities for the next two to three years. Our Makerspace was founded in 2018 and gets about 100 visits a year. Most of the students who visit us are brand new to the concept of Makerspaces. And to remove the learning barrier, we provide training, equipment use, and supplies absolutely free. 
And that's where this grant money comes in. If we provide any one student with enough supplies for a business, it would deplete the resources we keep on hand for learning. Furthermore, we want to be able to support a larger range of innovative, innovative ideas. The costs you see here are just quick estimates of what it might take for students to get started and test the market with the finished product. For example, a 3D design requiring special flexible or clear materials would have to be would have to take advantage of mail order services after the initial design and prototyping are completed at the library. Making family heirloom necklaces will require chains and pendants to be purchased, while the student designing a virtual library would need special camera equipment to scan the library into the metaverse and hosting to enable indoor GIS functionality. So these are a few of the team members that we would like to pilot the program with. Our innovation studio is staffed by seven student workers from different majoring disciplines. And the library also has a few graduate and undergraduate student workers in other departments. I personally have been working in makerspaces for about five or six years now, and I am the liaison librarian for the art, computer science, physics, and engineering departments, as well as the division of business. I truly believe that everybody is a maker and we want to continue to awaken the power of innovation within our students so that all 3,604 of them can go out and be the positive change that they want to see in the world. Thank you for your time and for having Zula here as part of ELC 2022. All right, and that's with 30 seconds to spare. Thank you so much, Mary. <laughs> all right, we cool. will give our judges uh, a moment to uh, deliberate through their rubrics while we introduce our next, uh, our next pitchers. Our next pitchers are going to be Corey Frederick and Chad LePlatinier at Nashville Public Library in Tennessee. And the title of their pitch is going to be NPL means business to the high school. Corey and Chad, you can take it away. All right, thank you. Okay, well, hello, my name is Chad LaPlatinier and this is Corey Frederick and we are from Nashville Public Library. First, I wanna share some relevant background information with everyone. Corey and I are both branch library managers, but we do have some business experience. I have a business degree in economics, so after 20 years, I can finally put it to some use. Although not a business major, Corey has tried his hand at several small entrepreneurial ventures, including book selling and concert poster selling. He has experience teaching mathematics in the Business Academy in a Metro Nashville Public High School and is passionate about helping people achieve their entrepreneurial goals. All right, so we are here today to ask for support to help develop young entrepreneurs through a partnership between Nashville Public Library's NPL Means Business and East Nashville Magnet High School's Marketing Pathway Program. The support will go towards textbooks, guest speakers, and connecting students to internships within Nashville. To begin, what exactly is NPL Means Business? It's an initiative that seeks to create a more diverse and motivated entrepreneurial ecosystem in Nashville with the library being an essential player in helping Nashville citizens discover and realize their dream business. So what do we do? We offer classes, book discussion clubs, and digital resources to Nashville's entrepreneurial community. Classes and programs are delivered through National Public Library, as well as in conjunction with community partners. Our digital resources include access to business-related databases, EBSCO's Entrepreneurial Mindset Training Course, as well as a book a librarian service, which allows entrepreneurs to make appointments with staff who can then direct them to the resources they need. And this is where East Nashville Magnet High School comes in. East Nashville Magnet High School is a new partner we are working with to support young entrepreneurs through their marketing pathway program. The marketing pathway is designed to prepare students for a career in planning, managing, and performing marketing activities to reach organizational objectives, as well as careers involved in the planning, management, and movement of people, materials, and products. 
Subject matter is arranged around sequence progressive courses that provide students with the opportunity to develop a holistic understanding of marketing systems and logistics and how they're used in sales, advertising, public relations, and other marketing, entrepreneurial, and business sectors. And now Corey is gonna talk about how we plan to support East Nashville Magnet High's marketing pathway students and teachers. NPL Means Business is asking for support to purchase textbooks for teachers and students to enhance their learning experience and better prepare them to be entrepreneurs. In particular, the textbooks would be for the school social media marketing course, which serves around 70 high school students. Ideally, we would use the money to purchase a classroom set of books for the students along with a teacher's edition to help the course's teacher regularly uh, prepare informative lessons. Additionally, MPO Means Business will present information about library resources and research techniques to students and will coordinate with local business support organizations such as uh, the Small Business Administration and SCORE to host guest speakers at the high school. Although some of these speakers will present to the high school at no cost, some speakers may charge a fee for such an engagement. Any funding remaining from the book purchase will be used as payment for speakers from outside organizations. Lastly, NPL Means Business will work with East Nashville Magnet High School to uh, help provide students internship opportunities throughout Nashville's business community. To evaluate the success of the partnership, NPL Means Business and East Nashville Magnet will analyze the growth of the internship program and request businesses that host interns complete a survey to reflect on student preparedness for their internship. A partnership between NPL Means Business and East Nashville Magnet High School would not only benefit local high school students, but also local business organizations. Funding from this pitch competition would help to establish a new program and strengthen long-term relationships between NPL and East Nashville Magnet High. With funding for textbooks, connections to a wide array of guest speakers, and the development of additional internship opportunities, NPL Means Business and East Nashville Magnet High will be, be, uh, be able to better prepare students to consider the possibilities that entrepreneurship in Nashville can offer. I wanna close with a quote from Jackie Freeman, who's the Assistant Principal of East Nashville Magnet High School and the head of the Marketing Pathway Program at the school. Mr. Freeman states, our partnership with the Nashville Public Library will benefit students by providing them with additional resources to be successful while earning their industry uh, cert certifications in our marketing program. The certification um, will equip. Oh, that, that's time. Sorry. Okay. Yep. <laughs> you were We're good. just shy of it, but yep. All right. Thank you right, so thank much, you. Chad and Corey. All right. We will shift to our judges, give them a moment to uh, uh, fill in their rubrics, and we will introduce our fourth set of pictures. Next up is Kate Davis and John Butler. They are with the Jersey City Free Public Library in New Jersey. And the name of their uh, pitch is Uncut Gems, Promoting Minority Immigrants and Female Entrepreneurs in Jersey City. All right, Kate and John, take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, we can't share screens right now. So, and also apologies for all the noises. We are in a, a big city <laughs> on a busy street. <laughs> okay, try it again. I'm sorry, Angel. All right, so hopefully it will stay quiet for us. Are our judges ready? All right. 
So hello, my name is Kate Davis. I work with the Jersey City Free Public Library, and I'm here to talk to you today about our Uncut Gems, promoting minority, immigrant, and female entrepreneurs in Jersey City. So fun fact, Lady Liberty lives in Jersey City, and the statue has an inscription that proclaim, proclaims to lift a lamp beside the golden door, so opening a gateway for everyone to pursue their happiness. When the JCFPL speaks of diversity and opportunities for immigrants, minorities, and women in our neighborhoods, it's with the knowledge that the light of that torch falls upon our patrons. So for many, we are their golden door to success in America. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is John Butler, also a librarian at uh, a reference librarian here at Jersey City Free Public Library. Our library is the largest municipal library in New Jersey with 10 locations in the bookmobile. Um, okay. And we're, we're going to focus today on our Cunningham Branch Library. And it's, um, it sits on an area of five square miles with a population of 65,000. And the neighborhood is the most ethnically diverse in Jersey City. So the last census says that 90% of the people in this neighborhood are part of minority groups and are under 35 years old. And a high portion are born outside the United States. So this is telling us a little bit about uh, who they are, but does not re reveal the obstacles they have to deal with. 70% uh, of this population operates with a high school degree or less. And that's, that's a crippling disadvantage when knowledge, jobs, and technical skills are growing ever more important. The medium income is the lowest of the Jersey City wards, and a high percentage of that income goes towards rent and commuting. So these are some of the problems that our community faces. And during COVID, we saw that we did have an impact supporting our community's professional goals with programs like the one you see on our screen reaching over a thousand viewers. So since we know that business and professional partnerships fulfill a community need, we plan to expand local impact by partnering with Rising Tide Capital or RTC and the JCFPL's service to small business team, the SSBT, will share mailing lists and our business collection, as well as co-sponsor webinars and programming with RTC. And this partnership will increase um, community engagement for SSBT and RTC, especially to our target audience of minority immigrant and female entrepreneurs who face obstacles such as lack of access to funding and appropriate digital tools. So the SSBT in partnership with RTC coaches will reach a substantial portion of this minority business community, especially those who already visit our library. So this is what it's going to look like um, on our timeline. From July through August, we will begin reaching out to potential program partners, and we'll be scheduling, th scheduling three weekly programs with them. Following this in September, we'll be promoting the program on our landing page, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. After that, in, through, through October, SSBT will conduct presentations with uh, Rising Tide Capital, RTC. These presentations will occur weekly and will repeat uh, over three weeks with the library meeting the costs of, con of, the, of a consultant and speaker. So um, the project results, the primary result is to expand the, library pro the library's programming offerings and to build on the momentum, momentum of the last year. By embedding a staff member at the Rising Tide location, we will be able to better direct them to library resources. The partnership will, will produce the data necessary to secure funding and support for sustained growth. Valuable products for this, for this project include creation of a curated business collection, and we will be establishing a digital archive of materials available 24 seven via our library platforms. Hey, to close it. Yeah, so we see our minority immigrant and female businesses as our uncut gems, and they represent talented and passionate workers attempting to bring prosperity to their businesses and to our community. So with your funding, we will help with the cutting and polishing so our local businesses can shine as a beacon of hope for others, just like Lady Liberty's torch. And thank you so much for your time. Best regards to other libraries presenting, and it's an honor to be able to pitch with you today. Yeah, thank you, everybody. All the best to the other competitors. All right, with just about 10 seconds left. Thank you so much, Kate and John, a wonderful uh, pitch. All right, we'll allow our judges to uh, 
deliberate on that one while we introduce our final pitch of the afternoon. And that is courtesy of Audra Espinoza. They are with Hastings Public Library in Nebraska. And the title of their pitch is Movers and Shakers, Making Entrepreneurship Accessible in Rural Settings. Welcome, Audra. Thank you. So I have been having so many issues with my presentation um, PowerPoint today. So instead of stressing about it any longer, I'm going to be doing an old fashioned elevator pitch. So I'm sorry, but it's just gonna be my face. <laughs> but I do have my script ready. So thank you so much for understanding. Um, hello, my name is Audra Espinoza and I am the outreach coordinator at Hastings Public Library. I am very passionate about library outreach services, and I truly believe in the success that comes from meeting people where they are. So without further ado, here's my pitch. What if we could reimagine the way people think of libraries, proving we are truly more than books? What if we could do that by bringing vital resources to spark economic and personal growth for our community with a technology lab on wheels? The Movers Project is exactly that. The Mobile Outreach Vehicle for Entrepreneurship in Rural Settings Project unites the community through the enduring pioneering spirit of Central Nebraska, driving it forward into the future as a united front. Technology is the key to unlocking entrepreneurial success, and Adams County, Nebraska is at a critical time for economic revival. By, re by reaching untapped resources and demographics, the library has the unique community connections, social capital, and fostering entrepreneurial environment to help our community succeed. The library is already nurturing entrepreneurship through its makerspace, and being able to bring these resources to the people will exponentially broaden their horizons. The Movers Project is a mobile outreach vehicle outfitted with technology to promote digital literacy and entrepreneurship by bringing resources to a diverse population in rural Nebraska that would not otherwise have access. The Movers Project will impact residents in Adams County, Nebraska by supporting economic growth for all residents through vital connections to tools, community partnerships, knowledgeable staff, and ease of accessibility. Movers will fill a need for digital literacy after school programming and entrepreneurship opportunities. HPL is in a unique position to spur economic development by eliminating barriers to entrepreneurial activity. Some of these barriers include lack of technology, simply not knowing how to begin or what's possible, absence of role models, language and cultural barriers, lack of digital literacy and technical processes. With its deep-seated connections across the community, the Movers Project acts as a supporter of entrepreneurship, driving economic success by providing tools for success and growth. By bringing well-coordinated resources to the community, the Movers Project eliminates a physical barrier to procurement of knowledgeable staff and technology to help people achieve their hopes and dreams. As wonderful as our bookmobile is, she's nearing 25 years old, which is very old in bookmobile years. The bookmobile is also limited by internet accessibility and is designed to carry books, not technology. Currently, the bookmobile's only laptop is powered by an unreliable hotspot for internet access. Movers will be unlike anything Adams County has ever had. It will fill a need for wireless bro broadband penetration in rural areas and a more reliable mobile hotspot that can accommodate multiple computers simultaneously. Other libraries nationwide have had success with similar outreach vehicles but movers would be customized to suit our rural settings, making high-speed access, um, providing high-speed access, which metro areas often take for granted. The library's impact would be measured by the percentage increase of bookmobile stops and patrons served, new programs developed with the community partnerships that are already in place that utilize the techn technologically equipped bookmobile, events attended that include STEM components, and the percentage increase of mobile hotspot connections to the bookmobile across Adams County. And thank you guys so much for affording me this opportunity to pitch my wild ideas to you guys. All right, thank you so yeah. very much, Audra. <laughs> I completely understand technical difficulties at the last it, minute, just like it has today. <laughs> it has been a day, I'm yeah. telling you. <laughs> I hear you on that, but great job nonetheless. There's thank nothing you. wrong with an old fashioned elevator pitch. That thank was spectacular. <laughs> All right, so we're going to transition to 
our judges. We're going to get them a breakout room uh, so that they can continue to deliberate. And while they are making the crucial decision as to which of these five awesome pitches uh, gets the award, I'd like to introduce uh, Electra Greer and Hannah Taylor. They are two of our winners from the 2020 on at the table pitch competition. Um, I'll go ahead and introduce them both or allow them to introduce themselves. Electra, we can go ahead and start with you. Sure, hi everyone. I'm super excited to be here. And um, <laughs> they all know me on this panel as, ah, I look forward to this so much. So very briefly, I am, um, library director of a small library up in the mountains of Colorado and participated a, a few years ago. I'm having a hard time knowing where to look right here on my screen because I just had to change my screen. And um, we we pitched a program that was really about videography services and small business services to our mountain community, especially during COVID. And we were fortunate enough to um, be one of the winners and to receive money. And I'm here, I think, to tell you not only uh, why it was a really fun and great experience and to just congratulate all of you for, for doing this, because we know that the role belongs to those who show up and you did. So <laughs> good job on that. Um, I just want to share a few takeaways. So I feel like I'm on that you know, restaurant impossible. Where are they now? Shark Tank. Is anybody still buying their product segment? So uh, the money that we did receive to get invested right back into our program, and I'm happy to say that is still going strong after three years, um, just like any program we have had to adapt it um, now that we're in a different COVID stage, um, we've had to look at it and change it around so that it's still going very well. Um, I took some notes so I wouldn't, you know, just get excited and go too much off script here. Um, I think for me, one thing that's like really, and everybody can hear me, right? Uh, yeah. The thing that I feel just so passionately about sharing, and Hannah, don't laugh. <laughs> now I'm gonna pitch my new business because so I'm ditching librarianship and I've become an entrepreneur. Um, <laughs> after Hannah's presentation, I was like, oh, I want to do that. So yeah, now I actually have a, uh, a book caravan on wheels, essentially a food truck that's a, that's a small book business and it's doing great. Um, is what I want to share with you is that I think what the best thing I hope you're all getting this from this process already is that really like learning to approach librarianship and public service academic librarianship from really that entrepreneurial um, perspective you know it really is a mindset um, we have of course a couple of business economists on here I when they did their their presentations but I think the approach and the asking yourself those questions that often we don't do in librarianship. It's not just the key performance indicators. It's not just the analytics, but I ask myself all the time, could a library or a business survive like this? Um, and that's like really important to bring that voice to the table. Um, I have a very concrete example. I was just in a meeting with a bunch of Colorado librarians and they were talking about their analytics and they were saying, you know, we consider our library patrons if they've used the library once in every three years, you know, we keep them on the books. I'm like, once in every three years, what business could survive like that? <laughs> Let's be realistic people. So it really like you learn to frame things differently and, you know, have that, um, I guess that leanness and that management edge that um, we don't necessarily always see in public service. So I think it's a great golden middle way to get from both. I really, really encourage when you're doing your professional development, your professional work, and wherever you are in the organization, you know, and I've been in uh, librarianship for quite a while now, I just never remember having a mentor or being in any classes where they were like, hey, what did you read in Entrepreneur Magazine this week? Or, hey, did you look at Forbes? But you know what, we can actually learn, not actually, but we learn a ton from our brethren that are doing similar work, but um, in the private sector. So for me, that's, been some of the most valuable takeaways. Um, I'm gonna look quickly at my notes. I mentioned read broadly. I mentioned, uh, yeah, resilience in organizations and just always thinking about like, what is the value that you're adding and not being scared to look at sort of the financial pieces. So those, those are some of the, to me, even more than the financial award, I would say that that has really influenced me as um, in my supervisory and managerial and budgetary aspects the most from this program and why I was super happy to be involved. So, and I'm always open to questions. And as Hannah knows, if you've got any ideas, send them to me because I always love to work, work out some of the details. So I'll hand it over to her. 
I think Electra might be one of my favorite people. Mm, yes. <laughs> I want to be yes. just like Electra <laughs> when I grow up. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I am a good dog to Electra. <laughs> I'm a good dog to Electra because she's like um, hyper positivity, and I'm like mm, everything could be terrible. Have we considered that? <laughs> no, but um, I had a really great experience last year as well. Uh, we pitched. Uh, I guess I should rewind a little bit. Mid-Continent Public Library uh, is where I'm from. Uh, we serve the greater Kansas City metro area. Um, it's a big, pretty big system. Uh, we really like being in the heartland, uh, right in the middle of the United States. So um, we're experiencing very hot weather today. So if you are not experiencing sweltering heat, uh, I am jealous. Um, that all being said, uh, we pitched food truck workshops last year. And this is something that we have always, you know, had a, had a hand in in Kansas city and um, Kansas city has this lovely food truck community, but um, the education is not necessarily there. And so we're like, Oh, we're the library. Why not? Right. Like if nobody else is doing it, that, that seems like a good fit, right. That's why libraries exist. If people are looking for resources, let's be a resource for those people. They just happen to be food truckers. And so, um, you know, what we did with the, the money we got uh, was instead of this in-person program that would normally, you know, be a six to eight hour workshop that we would do in person, um, obviously we we're all at home. They still needed the information. So instead of forcing people to be on an eight hour Zoom call, we actually broke it up into a series. So we did, you know, an hour and a half at a time for the full month and it really built upon itself. And it was something that I, we're gonna continue to do that way. Um, we learned a lot from the pandemic. Some things were great, some things were not so great, but um, forcing people to be on a Zoom call for that long was uh, not a thing that we were gonna do. <laughs> we were going to force them to do. Um, but yeah, I, you know, one of our big takeaways and maybe a takeaway that you guys should, you know, like think about, um, it is, it isn't about the money, you know, like we were going to do this thing, regardless of whether we got this, this grant, this, this, uh, lovely gift, because, that's what libraries do, right? Like you just make it happen. And if you don't have the, the funds to do it, as many libraries don't have the, the additional funds, you know, you've got these budget issues all the time. Um, start, start thinking, you know, creatively and innovatively and um, look at who you can partner with, who can help you with those aspects, um, the financial aspect, the marketing aspect, any of those things that you're really struggling with. How can you scale things back to start and plant that seed? Because if you plant the seed and it continues to grow, right? Now you can reach out to partners. Now you can sneak it in the budget for next year. And hopefully nobody asks you too many questions about it. Um, all that being said, do it anyway. Like you've got a community of amazing librarians here that want to have these conversations with you, which is why this is such an awesome event uh, that we get to be a part of. Um, a lot of really creative minds in this Zoom room. And I'm, I'm excited to, you know, have more conversations with you guys, collaborate on some stuff. Um, there's nothing more powerful than librarians getting with other librarians, um, because I think that's how we take over the world. So, uh, you know, don't tell anybody else, but we've, we've got all the power right here. <laughs> and a couple things Hannah reminded me that I wanted to interject is, you know, this hopefully is getting you confidence and continue to grow, but do not be ever scared or nervous. You should be going to your Chamber of Commerce meetings, your downtown development meetings. And some of this, you know, it's just language. We're all about language. We're all about words here. And you learn a little bit of the language and you go in there and they're always like blown away. And my whole big thing is like, no meeting should start until the librarian is at the table, <laughs> you know? So you need to really have, you have no idea how much you bring to the business world and the entrepreneurs. And it was years ago that someone came in and he was doing the first social robot, which um, for the, for kids and teens on the autism spectrum, which is now a multi-billion dollar business. And he was like, you don't recognize that in the libraries, you, you know, we see everybody. And that's a huge asset, the insights that we bring to entrepreneurs and businesses. They would die to have the trust that we have. They would die to have what we have. So always feel confident, get more confident by using those business resources so you can have those conversations. But just 
I really want to encourage you to never be shy with that. And the other thing is the whole non-traditional partnerships. And Hannah talked about that a little bit, but you know, you're going to go ahead and do whatever it is that you're doing, but really get out of the education librarian world. Um, you know, really think about all these different kinds of partners. Um, and by the way, I'm really pushing hard to get an article in Entrepreneur Magazine <laughs> because I was like, wait, how are we not in that magazine yet? So I will be reaching out to some of you um, and I hope that's okay because I loved your pitches and I want to get some of your experiences. But those are the things that you can think about like when you're doing all your library work, like why am I only publishing or being vocal or promoting to education sector or library sector or public service sector? Try to think of all those non-traditional partners and sectors that you can you know, get the word out to. And we're super lucky because people are almost always happy to see the librarians show up. And here, I'll show you right now behind me. This is my trick, my icebreaker. I've got a bunch of these silver wigs and I always show up and put the wig on for a second and do the, you know, the cliche shh. And, you know, it disarms everybody and then I take it back off and then blah, 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 blah. So play to type for a little while, you know, come in as like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, whatever cliche they have, um, uh, be a librarian, you know, break the ice and then go for it. But, um, you know, just, just keep in this journey because it's been so much fun for me and um, I really wasn't exaggerating. Hannah knows I'm going to be showing up at your town with my little bookmobile and Sally, <laughs> what we call book bouquets. So. I'll be quiet now. Back to you, Hannah. <laughs> no, I, I I like it. And I think that there's there's there is power in, you know, the libraries tend to exist in the four walls that that their building is. And if you can get the the courage to step outside those four walls and really um, go to those chamber meetings, go to the BNIs, go to, you know, whatever networking events are happening. I can't tell you how many times you will show up to somewhere you've never been before as librarians. I'm guessing that 80% of us are introverts, um, self-identified introverts, networking freaks us out, we start sweating, but you know, there are things that you can do to kind of like calm yourself down. You go in with a goal, you take that deep breath, you take a shot of whiskey, whatever it is that you need to do, you know, to, to walk into that room. Because as soon as you say, I'm with the library, all those walls are completely knocked down and people are like, I love the library. And as soon as they say that, you are at peace again because now you're welcome in the space. And next time they're gonna be like, please tell us what you're doing at the library. Please tell us how we can help you. And all it took was you walking in that room, right? The worst thing <laughs> I can hear is when I go out to these networking groups and I tell them, you know, what's going on at Midcontinent and this is how we're helping entrepreneurs is I had no idea that the library did that, right? And we all hear that. I had no idea that the library helped with that. I had no idea that you had those programs. I had no idea that you had these resources. We can't, it's not, you know, this isn't feel the dreams, build it and they will come. Like you have to go out and you have to tell people what you're doing and God, I love social media sort of but it's not enough, right? It's not enough to rely on a Facebook post or a tweet or a LinkedIn, whatever. Like people love faces, right? People like being in person and um, really connecting with people that way. And so if you can find the courage to do that, it's gonna change everything that your library is capable of doing because you've, you've exited the four walls. And sometimes you need to hold someone's hand to bring them back to the library. They were comfortable at the library when they were eight, but then, they grew up and they stopped coming and they stopped, you know, their library card expired or they are scared because they have fines and they don't know what to deal, you know, how to deal with that. Hold their hand and bring them back in. Wipe out those fines and get them a new card. You know what I mean? Like bring them back into the community because those are people that are going to be on your team moving forward, whether it's they're going to be a, a loyal customer, they're going to be a referral source, they're going to be a community partner, whatever that is. But that's, that's how we can kind of break down those barriers and those walls. Awesome. Well, that is great. I, I, we're, I know uh, Electra put the question out there in the chat, but if there's anyone out there who has questions for Electra and Hannah, please put them in the chat. We've got about, oh, 10 minutes before uh, we, uh, or 10 or 15 minutes before the uh, winners will be announced. I had one question. So when you, the moment you both won, the competition, what was your first plan of action after you celebrated and said, yay, we got this. 
what was the first thing that you did towards uh going towards building your project oh i added a shot of whiskey to it <laughs> kelly knows i thought we had done so poorly that um my, it was myself and another presenter he'd already gone out to get a beer and the library was closed and then when i was listening i was like oh, i don't know i gotta pay attention where's my zoom <laughs> but honestly Thanks for, that's a great question, Kelly, because I shamelessly let everybody know, like, and that's not, and that's a joke, but it's really important. If you can't promote and be confident and advocate for yourself and what you're accomplishing, then you shouldn't be doing any, you guys shouldn't have been pitching. And I know you're pitching because you can do that, but you shouldn't be talking to business owners and you shouldn't be talking to entrepreneurs if you don't feel comfortable saying, hey, let's get out there and show what we're doing. So um, I think the very first thing uh, we did, because we, you know, you can tell my mind too, and all of you, you had a lot of, a lot of ideas going was um, the minute that I knew that we had the money coming, I, I just hit send on a lot of emails of things that I was hoping. I was super excited um, because again, it was a videography small business program and in every community, right? Um, just also to jump off what Hannah said, believe it or not, I'm actually not an extrovert, <laughs> but you want, I did, you want to find the people in your community that are really comfortable. And I like being the puppet master and be like, Hey, can you go out there and talk about this? And there's find those charismatic influencers in your community and they don't have to be in the library. And so I kind of had some people in mind. And once I was able to say, Oh, we've gotten this, you know, it's a great title, right? It like, just turn it into whatever you want. Don't think about it too much. Like you all are winners, all of you, all five of you. So already just say, I, you know, I was on this competition that I was chosen for and we were able to do blah, blah, blah. So I started thinking right away, like how could I promote with confidence and, you know, reach out to some of the community people that I knew then had some finances and other things that I could um, get, we could get leverage from. Because the minute, you know, somebody gives you five cents, you've already, got a little bit of leverage and so you know that's all about being part of the business world too like oh you're offering this what can I offer this so that's that's really was my first step was right away like how can I maximize um both just this uh not just the financial piece but that is important so we shouldn't be scared to talk about that but also um you know the credibility that you all now have just being part of this okay so you know really keep going with that Hannah Oh, what was the first thing I did? I don't know. I mean, I let my boss know that was pretty important. I'm like, hey, send an email to development. <laughs> let them know that there's going to be a random check coming in. Um, no, but, uh, you know, one of the first things we did was um, we, we shot for the stars. And I think we, we tend to do that. Um, I think it's good to have like your your rose colored goggles on sometimes or the blue sky ideas. Um, and put an ask out there. And so we knew that we wanted to do this food truck workshop. We already had some community partners that luckily don't charge us <laughs> to do a lot of that for us. Um, it's because we we eat a lot of food truck food. So there's a there's that in-kind donation stuff going on. Um, that all being said, uh, there was one person in particular that we really, really wanted to come teach a marketing piece. Um, she's been on covers of all sorts of magazines and lots of stories written up about her and this this food truck that she had has just been like almost like untouchable you know influencer status right and so we're like let's just reach out let's just see what happens you know let's offer her this money that we got and see if we can pull her in um because you know as a as a data mindset if we could get her all of a sudden our numbers are going to go up because our marketing will take off because if she posts one time about it to her Instagram, which has 20,000 followers, we've just opened up a can of worms and I love worms. Let's go. Um, so we reached out to her and, uh, she, she was like, yeah, like totally let's do it. Like, I would love to be part of, I've never heard of this before. I can't believe the library does stuff like this. I'm like, yes, my God, come, come join the cult. Um, so we reached out to somebody that we thought was untouchable and uh, turns out that she was all on board and um, we were able to do a really great event that had like record breaking registration. And um, that was that was something that kind of came from it. And we wouldn't have, uh, you know, we probably wouldn't have reached out if we wouldn't have had this like little extra <laughs> uh, to be able to do so. But that all being said, it, 
it wasn't necessarily about the money, right? It's about the confidence to ask. It's about, you know, making that connection first. And so um, that was maybe one of the first things we did was like, let's try to get this really popular person to come teach this class. Um, and I'm going to just drop her link in the chat here because if you go to her website, you're going to be like, oh yeah, she's a food truck owner and also a model and also very famous in lots of different ways. So um, her food truck's name is Cafe Cafe. Very fun. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what we did after, you know, celebrating a little bit. But celebrating at home uh, is not as fun as celebrating with your colleagues. So I was like, hey, five month old child, we just won some money. Aren't you so excited for me? And she's like, oh, look. <laughs> Alexandra, I had a good question. Can you give me a, give us a little bit more what you're thinking? Um, just clarify a little bit the question. Sure. And Alexandra's question was, when you approached community partners to help support your business programs, what kinds of things did they want the library to offer them? And what were you able to actually offer them? So uh, can you hear me? Yeah. OK. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering when you actually went out to approach your community partners with the idea of the new initiatives that you were looking to uh, launch in your library specific to the business programs. Um, was there anything in particular that the partners asked you for um, as part of the partnership? Um, and I'm just wondering what ultimately your partnership looked like, you know, what did mm -hmm. the library end up providing to your partners? So for our program and in general, what I found, you know, people want visibility. Um, so that's a big one. You know, there's businesses and small businesses, they're going to want visibility, which, you know, that harkens back to, you know, doing coupons for a summer reading program, but you kind of up it. So what, you know, how we approach it, and I think our businesses have been very pleased is that we talked a lot about how we reach a new kind of audience with, you know, we've kind of kept up a lot with you know social media but also other kinds of services and so i always broach it with um when i say when i reach out to partners I'm, i always start with these are all the amazing things we can do for you that you probably don't realize and then i talk about how that actually can translate into you know sales and actually some money um and it, it, from our example, it has because we were really part of what we asked for with our specific thing was to see how their um, how the pro it was businesses that didn't have much of a social media or online um, transactional like they hadn't done things with Square or anything like that. So we were helping businesses actually uh, do that. So they were we were able to see some tangibles. But um, I'm not sure this is going to answer your question. But one thing that we've done, you know, is a lot. There are a lot of libraries that are still very traditional with like meeting room space and small business things like doing printing. And it was very, you know, I was raised at the time where it was like, are you a nonprofit? You know, having to be really careful with that line. And we've kind of real suddenly started realizing, why do we have all these small business resources like databases and stuff, but we're not also doing the same thing for our business, you know, patrons. So we kind of now. Um, we help a lot more with space. Uh, we help with, especially for small businesses, um, we have a really great system now for um, them being able to do, like, if their staff needs to come in and do presentations or Zooming or whatever, um, we've really done more with our technical infrastructure for them, um, along with learning and databases. I'm not sure if that answers your question, but I, we, I do try to remember that for them, it, the bottom line is keeping the doors open in the business, the finances. So I really try to talk in those concrete terms and not just sound like, oh, la -di -da -di, you know, we can do all these feel good things or education talk because, you know, business owners, especially small business owners, the bottom line is like, you know, the money and keeping the lights on and staff and employees. So I also try to uh, give, tell, talk to them a lot about small business resources. I'm really trying to be up on, oh, did you know about these kinds of funding opportunities. So I'm not sure if that answers your question. Please ask more specifically if it doesn't. Um, but that's usually what they have been like, oh, what can you do for us beyond, you know, they have in their minds the obvious, like, okay, you're, you know, you're going to have a newsletter and you're going to put it, put us in it. But when you let them know how many people will see it and how many people are coming, and I really talk about the broad range um, that a lot of times people don't realize it's not just families and kids or it's not just seniors, you know, that's usually um, perks up a little bit. Does that answer a little bit? And I'll let Hannah jump in. 
Yeah, I, um, you'd be surprised that when you ask somebody for something, they don't necessarily want anything in return. They're just, they're happy to help, which is, I mean, if you think about like social media in general, right? Like if you ask for a recommendation, how there's so many people that are willing to give that freely, right? Because everybody wants to be helpful. And that's, that's a really great thing. Of course, when you're talking like community partners, whether you're looking at your <coughs> business community partners, like SCORE, like the SBA, like at your local university, whatever that may be, it is, it's a lot about visibility and it's a lot about um, putting, um, putting them out on your social media, putting them in your newsletter, using the resources you have, right? Like use that database you have and say, hey, did you know that you can get this information from this database? But if you need help taking it a step further, might I suggest reaching out to your local score organization and getting a mentor because they can really help you analyze some of that information, right? Like really marry the two ideas um, and, and just make that ask. Um, sometimes it is... Um, a mo more of a like a financial transaction sometimes it's hey like we'll throw your logo on this thing of course with libraries there's a very um fine line between like promotion and then promotion of this thing that people have to pay for right and so you want to be careful um there's a pretty fine line there we work with a lot of small businesses obviously and um we, we tend to get a lot of people that are like, hey, I would love to come do a presentation at the library. Um, I can do, I know all sorts of business accounting stuff. Great. I don't know business accounting. So we, that's definitely something that we are lacking until that person is like, and this is why you should hire my business. Okay. Hard stop, right? So you really want to make sure that you're vetting your community partners as well, because you above all else need to keep that trust with your, with your customers and with your clients. Um, and that is, I don't know, I like to call them the sharks of the world. <laughs> They're just doing their job, right? But uh, we have to be good stewards of, of our customers as well. Awesome. Well, this was great feedback. Uh, it looks like our judges are back in here. So I want to again, thank Electra Greer and Hannah Taylor uh, for sharing their experiences from winning the pitch contest in 2020 and for dropping so many gems for us uh, over these past 20 minutes. Thank you so much. So before we hear from the judges, uh, we are going to launch a poll for our audience award. Uh, and I think Angel's going to drop that. All right, so go ahead and vote for your favorite pitch. The winning library will receive an additional $750. All right, so those, uh, those answers are coming in fast. Okay. Okay, let's see. What about 65% participated right now, right? All right. Give about 15 more seconds. All right, so let's see, a couple more people are in. All right, last call for votes for the Audience Choice Award. All right. All right, um, we'll go ahead and end the poll. And Angel, did you want to announce who the, do we want to announce the winners of the audience choice or for the contest first? Let's do the judge votes first and then we'll do audience second. Is that okay? Sounds fantastic to me. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, bring back our judges. Uh, if you caught them in the chat uh, or on the website, our judges for uh, the event here are Chanel D. James. She's a faculty member at the Bryan School of Business and Economics at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Diane Lucci, uh, who is the, Lucy, who is the Business and Careers Manager at Rich, Richland Library in South Carolina. 
and Janet McRae, who is the Economic Development Director at Miami County, Kansas. All right, so judges, have you come to a decision? So I have been nominated to provide you with your exciting results. So I feel a little bad because I wish I was more of a cheerleader at this moment. But I, I will say that the judges talked about how we, we wish we could give everyone money and then we found out everyone does get money. So we were very grateful of that because this there were a lot of exciting things that you were talking about doing and so encouraged by the things that were going on. But in the fourth and fifth place categories, we placed Nashville Public Library and Xavier University. In the third category was Middletown Township Public Library. So congratulations to them. Second place, was Hastings Public Library, which then gets you to the top, which was the top for all three of us, was Jersey City Free Public Library in their proposal that they had. So congratulations to all of you, and we hope that these funds allow you to move your projects forward. Congratulations. Yay! Yay. Congratulations <laughs> to everyone. And uh, thank congratulations, you everyone. Yes, thank you again to our esteemed judges. Uh, and our audience choice award winner uh, was Middletown Township. All right. Let's see. Well done. Thank I you, everyone. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much. And, you know, I think all, all of everyone did great. Um, and we can see the congratulations flowing in the uh in the comments below so fantastic all right so uh as we start to bring this to a close um let's take a look at where we are in the schedule um we are going to do a networking and discussion platform i have a few questions uh for everyone to come in and chime in but again i want to say congratulations uh, to our winners. Everyone was a winner, but definitely congratulations to Jersey City Free Library uh, for winning the top prize and congratulations to Middletown for winning our audience award. Um, if you'd like to stick around for the networking portion, we're going to flow right into that now, but I want to give a chance to say thank you again to our judges and a special thank you to our uh, two uh, 2020 winners, Electra and Hannah. And also thank you to our partners at EBSCO, Duncan Smith, who's also on the call. And last but certainly not least, a big thank you to Steve and Angel uh, for uh, organizing this event, bringing me into the fold to help organize this event. And then I'll just pass it to Steve and Angel to say their thank yous and their last comments. Duncan, are you willing to say a few words as our, as our financial sponsor? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just want to say to everybody, I just for a second, um, congratulations to um, uh, everybody for participating. Um, I just, I love this event. Um, I just think it's these skills and the, you know, and are just so essential to libraries living into the full put their full potential for their communities and so EBSCO is a very happy sponsor of the pitch competition um, and I just want to say that I personally am loving uh, working and being a part of the entrepreneurs and libraries conference and my uh, colleagues here in North Carolina and Blink. So thank you very much for letting me play with you. Um, it's a blast. All right, that's all I got. <laughs> thank you, Duncan. And many of you know that Duncan has been a public librarian and while working in a public library, he came up with the idea of Novel List, which he then, in which he ran as a company for a long time before uh, it was sold to EBSCO. So Duncan is both a public librarian, has been a public librarian and an entrepreneur. And so, and actually this was his idea. Uh, three years ago, when we were first proposing creating an ELC conference, uh, he suggested we do a pitch competition. So in addition to being the primary funder, he's also the originator and we appreciate his, his several roles in this event. Angel, any final words from you before we go into our discussion time? 
No, just to thank everyone, especially all of our winners. You all won. And so I appreciate you, our planning team once again. And of course, my co-chair, Steve and Kelly. Thanks, everyone. And be on the lookout for more stuff from the Entrepreneurship and Libraries Conference. We will be doing things regularly. So check out our website. And finally, thank you to Jen Hansel. I don't know if Jen is with us today. Uh, she is our pitch consultant and had, I don't know if she met with all five, but she she offered to meet with all five um, of the finalists. And hopefully if she did meet with you finalists, that was useful. She also helped do our workshop and she participated as well two years ago. So thank you also to Jen Hansel. All right, Kelly, over to you to moderate our concluding discussion. <laughs> 